cow. Yes. Uh, well, tell real quickly what all we bought for the home. You know, the, the, the Pelton Children's Center was in need initially of bedding. And uh, bedding and, and possibly, if we could, maybe some game sets. That was about it because they, they, they didn't have too much more for, for that. We ended up getting the, the, the bedding, the comforters, new pillows, new shams. We ended up getting not only the game sets but games and two 47-inch flat-screen TVs with mounts, okay? And it's continuing to grow from there. Also, we're going to be giving individual gifts for the children as well. So it is absolutely just blossomed. I mean, we have raised so much. And for all those who, who still want to give, we're still accepting donations because all that does, it puts more money into the Depelchin Children's yeah, they, Center. Anything we have left over, we're going to give is a cash donation. That is correct. So Everything sure left over is a cash that. donation. And, and let me tell you, and, and at this time of year, it's so much fun. You know, like I said, I'll probably head out early of this show because we will be heading over and handing out gifts this afternoon. We'll be presents. elfless at that point. You'll be <laughs> elfless at that point. But, you know, y'all can all look on <laughs> our Facebook account or online and be able to see the way I'm dressed in studio. I've got a it's up uniform already. made for radio, don't I? Yes, it's it's already up on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my phone is going to be vibrating with Facebook posts here any minute, uh, you know, comments. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely something to be appreciated. And, you know, right now during the holidays, we have a great show. Our, our show today is actually based on safety. Yeah. You know, exactly. one of the things we're really trying to do, you know, we talk about all the great things that we're doing out there and raising money and Toys for Tots and, and toy drives. But, you know, a lot of times this time of year we forget to think about safety. If you can't dress like an elf because who's going to who's gonna mug an elf? <laughs> right. Uh, we, we might have some things to, to discuss uh, exactly. about, about safety. <laughs> and I chose to dress as an elf. And to me, it's just a lot safer. No one bothers with me that way. They run with the opposite direction. Crime rate against yes. elves is pretty low. Pretty low right there. That is correct. So. Uh, uh, statistically speaking, I, I think it's probably pretty close to zero. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How many, how many mugged elves have you seen? On N- TV, not I, a lot, not, not too many. Not a lot. That is correct. Yeah. I, w- I would agree. So we are discussing safety during the holidays. You know, unfortunately, crime. I believe, I, from what I've read, and we'll probably learn some more about that as we uh, discuss here. But any crime does increase. Certain types of crime increase uh, during the holidays. Shoot, last night we have a little cigar group that hangs out in the Heights, and uh, every couple of weeks, and we we meet up, and uh, Rob and I are, are members of this little cigar cigar club. And we meet up in the Heights every couple of weeks and smoke cigars. And Gina over here is making sounds. She, she's. I, I'm sorry. You were. Awesome you were to my left. I was looking to the right. I. I already forgotten about you over there. That's <laughs> that ADD, you know. <laughs> anyway, we meet up in the Heights every couple of weeks. And last night, multiple cars were broken into in the parking lots. The quick smash and grab. They busted windows out, grabbed some quick stuff. And took off. Stole. One of our guys had a laptop stolen. That type of thing. One of the other guys, car got his window busted out. He had his iPod in there, multiple things. They didn't grab anything. Probably ran His wallet. So they were just looking for that quick thing in the seat that they could grab. Didn't even care. Didn't even take the time to actually look in the window and say, hey, is there something quick I can grab? No, they just busted the window out, then looked in and, and took what they could and took off. So multiple cars broken into so it's definitely an issue. It's unfortunate that at this time of year when we're thinking about giving and, and all, you know, all this sort of thing, the, the cheer, holiday cheer is supposed to be in the air, that it's also a time where crime rates increase. And it's great. And a lot of times because individuals are out there buying presents, they're out there a lot of times they've got disposable income, cash, they're buying presents. What better pray to do than to go out there and to pray on opportunities that are right there in front of you a lot of times? That's why we tell everybody is when you buy something – in your car, you're in a Target, for example, and you buy, take it right back home. You know, don't stop at multiple areas to get out and get other items. And, you know, as a society, we were talking earlier this morning, as a society, we're a little bit innocent. And right. we're starting to get, starting to become aware of how vulnerable we really are. So, yep. uh, anyway, this is a great segue into introducing uh, our next guest. Yes, Sam- Samantha Merritt. Samantha and she is with Merritt. Berkshire yeah. Hathaway, which happens to be our company. Shameless plug. <laughs> Shameless plug. And so welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes. And, you know, and one of the things, obviously, for safety-wise is real estate. You know, a lot of individuals are out there buying homes right now. They're buying and selling homes. And, you know, let us know a little bit about what safety issues or how you can prevent, from a safety perspective, individuals going into homes and, you know, obviously they're looking or they're, they're, you have a lot of activity going on. What do you recommend to your other well, clients? as a realtor, um, you know, I'm more of a listing agent. I don't show too many homes, but I do preview homes for that are usually distressed for my builders and flippers. Um, 
But as a realtor, with the listings, you can make sure that they're on a Supra. You can make sure that you've got proper showing instructions just to really guard the seller from having people into their house. Also tell the sellers, you know, to put their things away, tuck them away. Um, But when you're seeing houses, it's really just about being aware. You really need to know your surroundings and be loud and, you know, make sure that you're safe. If you feel safe or if you don't, if you don't, go, don't go in. And, you know, and you mentioned something right there. Obviously, you have a Supra. And a, a lot of times you use a service mm-hmm. in which individuals have to call in. They have to then a lot of times the age, an agent will call in, request a showing time. Okay. Talk a little bit about how that works and why that increases safety in that process. Well, because also, too, you know when someone is in the house, but someone also knows when you, where you are. If you have an appointment set somewhere, uh, then the showing service knows where you are, that you are at that time supposed to be in that house in that hour or so. Lord forbid anything does happen, you know, there's a, a trail of where you were throughout yeah, the day. And that's why we get a lot of people who are using those, uh, like the mechanical lock boxes that are just a, a code to put into mm-hmm. it. There's no way you can find out who's been in there. Right. And unfortunately, there's people who you'll put a mechanical box on a house and then maybe an agent will say, well, here's the code or, the, or somebody observed the code as it was being opened. Right. And then go back in without having, you know, been with an agent. Right. And so you're very vulnerable. And of course, you know, we talked about, talk about like uh, REOs, which is, a, you know, foreclosures. Real you know, estate Stacey owned. Sutter has walked into houses where people were in there. In there. And they're right. supposed to be empty houses. Yeah. And so you got to really have a high degree of awareness. Well, you, you really mentioned that there. Supra. You know, a Supra a lot of times nowadays, is, it's really neat because you've got those, you got the Supras now, they're electronic that you actually can control from your, from your phone. Right. And so talk a little bit about that, because th- those are items, as you mentioned, you can actually define who is there, when they checked in, when they checked out. It's a very controlled entrance. Yes, and as a listing agent, Supra will send reports. You know exactly when, the, from the second that it was activated, when someone is in the house. And, you know, and, and the reason why, obviously, I've, over the years, bought and sold several homes. And let me tell you, it's neat to be able to see, okay, this individual came in at this time, they left at this time. Now, from a safety perspective, also, the last thing you want to do is walk into your home when somebody else is there. You never know what type of confrontation could or could not happen because a lot of times it can be a stressful process. It can be hopefully a fun process. But, you know, everyone, all of us are made differently. Everyone has a different reaction. Some people love to have a homeowner there, and other people can't stand to have the homeowner there. And you've probably been through those different yes, things. Yes, yes, I've been through both. But, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, for a lot of sellers, it's invasive having people in their home to begin with. So you really should guard against that as their representation. And then how about, you know, we mentioned decluttering a home, but also part of safety is also taking away personal items that mm-hmm. can be looked at. Because a lot of times there are cases in which people have gone in and they look at your personal items for the purpose of finding out who you are, what you do, and maybe what your likes, hobbies, whereabouts, et cetera, et cetera, can be. Well, yeah. So a lot of times you have conversations about making sure that you depersonalize the home. Absolutely, Is that absolutely. I mean, I think it's human nature. When you go into someone's house, you look around and you start to build and paint the picture of who it is that lives there. But uh, it is very important to take down personal photos, put jewelry away. and I mean, not just for showing it for usability, but for your own safety. Well, that goes to, thank you. That goes to another point as well. A lot of people... Um, Younger agents want to hurry up and get someone in their car, and a seasoned professional knows you really need them to go through the process and have someone that actually is in the market to purchase. A lot of people get out there and get in the car because they are casing homes, especially this time of year. So you want someone that has gone through the process and you know they're actually looking because there are those people that get in to look and see what they have in this house. Mm -hmm. You know, you see online that there's someone that has a lot of um, signed autographed memorabilia. So people get in, they specifically target these to get in and see the quickest way to get in and out or the easiest way. Yeah. And I would agree, you know, it's it's one of those things, you know, when you you look at real estate, real estate is, uh, you know, robberies. You know, we talk about safety. Most of the, uh, uh, there's a lot of robberies that go on, right? And a lot of times, and the police will tell you this, most robberies that take place in home are individuals who know something about that home, mm-hmm. who either been in the home, know the family in the home, know a nuance as far as when they're going to take somebody out, et cetera, et cetera. Or it's vacant. Or it's vacant, that is correct. So there's a lot of stuff like that you have to be aware of. You have to be cognizant of your surroundings, and you have to know how to prepare a home correctly. So what kind of dialogue do you have with your clients? You're about to list a house that's occupied. What kind of dialogue do you have about you know, being safe, being, you know, make sure that their things are put up 
talk about that. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I really do. I mean, it's, well, for subtle reasons, I mean, it shows better when it's depersonalized also. Um, but you do, you go into that, you tell them to remove their personal things, um, declutter, all of that. But with safety, you make sure that they have, you have set scheduled times that you are able to bring them into the house so that they're not home and that so other realtors aren't just in and out. And... You know, well, I was yeah. just going to say, we're, we're, we're already coming up on a break. Time flies. Yeah. Uh, we want you to stick around for sure. In the last segment, we'll kind of have an open mic where we, we're going to bring all these points together. Yeah, so you're, not you're, you're not finished yet. You're not finished yet. We've got more work to do. I'm done. But we want to make sure folks know how to get a hold of you. Uh, we always encourage our listeners to work with professionals, and the folks we bring on the show are experts at what they do. So we want to know, make sure the folks know how to get a hold of you. What is your number? My phone number is 832-589-6646. Uh, you can also find me at www.meritgroup.com. And that's M-A-R-E-T group.com. <laughs> 832-589-6646. We're up against a break right now, but stay tuned. We'll have Santa Claus on the line when we come right back. Mm-hmm. 